Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about amnesia. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the different types of amnesia. Did you know that you have amnesia? But what even is amnesia? When you have memory loss from conditions like trauma or disease or injury, psychologists and medical doctors call that condition amnesia. And there's a few different kinds. Let's start with the kind of amnesia that we all have, and then we'll get into a few of the more rare. The kind of amnesia that we all have is called infantile amnesia. None of us remembers being an infant or a baby. Typically, our first memories form when we're about three or four years old. Before that, we just don't remember things, and there are a few big ideas as to why. Freud thought that our infant brains were just undergoing too much trauma to make memories. Piaget claimed that our brains just weren't ready to make memories. The concept of infantile amnesia was first identified by early psychologist Caroline Miles all the way back in 1893. She asked a hundred women what was the earliest thing they could remember and how old they were when they made that memory. Miles proposed that your first memory probably occurs around that time because that's when we have both the cognitive and language skills to retain that memory. Another type of amnesia that a lot of us have experienced is drug-induced amnesia. This is when you have no memory of a span of time while you're under the effects of a drug. If you've ever had surgery where they temporarily put you to sleep or have had a dental procedure like getting your wisdom teeth out, this is why you can't remember any of that surgery and usually for quite some time after that surgery. Scarily, benzodiazepines like rohypnol, also called the date rape drug, also induce this kind of amnesia. Another, slightly rarer kind is called situation-specific amnesia. That's when we block out certain periods of time because they are highly associated with traumatic emotional memories. Highly emotional memories could be processed differently than non-emotionally charged memories. And this type of situation-specific amnesia is one of the reasons certain emotional conditions like PTSD can be so incredibly difficult to live with. The next type of amnesia is called transient global amnesia. And this type is most likely caused by a biological difference in the hippocampal region of your brain. The odd part about transient global amnesia is that there seems to be no precipitating factor. You just wake up one day and can't remember anything. On the bright side, people who suffer from transient global amnesia usually regain their memories in a few hours or possibly even a day. So it is very short term. It's scary, but sufferers do regain their memories in full very quickly. The last two types of amnesia focus more on the time period that you lose than on the specific condition that caused the memory loss. When you can't remember new information, that's called anterograde amnesia. This is probably one of the most famous types of amnesia, and you'll see it in popular psychological cases like HM, and even in mainstream movies like 10 Second Tom or Memento or even Dory. When you can make new memories but can't remember old memories, that's called retrograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia usually means that you forget facts, not skills. So say you forget the person who taught you to play the piano, but you still remember the skill of being able to play the piano. Or you forget where you bought your shoes, but you still remember how to tie your shoes. There can be a lot of different factors that cause both retrograde and anterograde amnesias, from say an injury like a car accident to a medical condition like a stroke. And so the average recovery time 
or if your brain recovers at all, is going to vary widely depending on that cause. If you want to find out more about how we make memories, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! You know, I didn't learn to tie my shoes until I was like nine. I'm, I'm still not really great at it. <laughs> I'm gonna dedicate this video to the real science hero, Velcro.